It's Saturday, April 29th here at the West End Gun Club out here on the 300 yard impact area. Just setting up my target if, I don't know, can you see behind me? <laughs> I can't see my, my screen there, but setting up a 10 by 10 plate. This is sort of a last second range trip. I wasn't really gonna come out to the range this morning, but decided to go ahead and do it because there's a couple things I wanted to do. And uh, yeah, maybe take the opportunity. So I won't be here too long. I uh, set up this target and I'm probably going to set up a 50 yard target just to re-verify zero on the 1022 and then we'll do a little bit of shooting and we'll get out of here. supposed to be a warm day today it's uh, 71 degrees right now it's gonna be about 90 so I'm sitting in the shade right now trying to stay cool and uh, the one thing that I hate about outdoor ranges are the bugs they're out in full force right now in any case everyone is very interested in the Bush no match pro ED so I did a short kind of teaser of this scope in the last range vlog I uh, showed it off a little bit and uh, didn't really have time to mess with it, but I definitely wanted to take it out and uh, get it zeroed. So I did that. And I just verified a 0 50 right now, and I set the zero stop. So one thing, well, let's just talk about the basic specs. Bushnell Match Pro ED uh, came out a couple years after the original Bushnell Match Pro, which is a, the Bushnell Match Pro is a 30 millimeter 6 to 24. And I think it's a 50 millimeter objective. The Match Pro ED is a 5 to 30 with a uh, 34 millimeter to 56 millimeter objective. And uh, it's got a zero stop in which the Match Pro does not. Sorry, I keep waving my hand in front of my face, the bugs are flying in my mouth. So I set the zero stop this morning. Uh, the one thing I don't really appreciate with it right now is the fact that the zero stop has no kind of leeway on the bottom end. So normally with zero stops, once you set your zero stop, once you set your zero, put your zero stop at zero, most decent scopes should let you come down about five tenths of a mil underneath the zero stop. This one does not, it's hard set at zero. So you're kind of stuck there, which is not a good thing because more often than not, you're gonna set your 50 yard zero a certain condition and you might travel to another range or the weather changes and the temps are different. And if such a rim fire, your zero can adjust a tenth, two tenths of a mil given the temperatures. And it's nice to at least have that ability to come down a little bit in an emergency without having to do a zero, you know, adjust, readjust your zero stop. So that's an unfortunate aspect of this. You will need to readjust your zero stop. So you'll need to carry a tool around with you in the event that you shoot in specific conditions where the zero is changed by like a tenth of a mil and it comes underneath. If it's over your original zero, who cares, right? You just dial up and you're fine. But if it's under your original zero, below, if it's shooting high, then you're gonna have a problem. Outside of that, again, I made comments earlier in my last vlog, how about the turrets are a little spongy? I, I need to rephrase that. The turrets are, they do click, but they have the, there is gonna be a little bit of backlash, I guess, in the gears. Good quality scopes, high-end scopes, won't have that backlash on the turret. And they're, they're very hard clicks in the way they engage, they're positive, and there's like no play no no wiggle room once you're on that section on that on that tooth of that gear uh this one is definitely not um it has backlash and uh, i will compare it to viper psd gen 2 which is kind of what this is sort of 
gonna compete against in that price segment. Although this is cheaper now c compared to the new Viper PST Gen 2 prices. But um, the Viper PST Gen 2, the clicks on that are about the same as this. So they're comparable. Uh, as far as the magnification ring, I love it because it's very smooth. It doesn't really require much tension. They give you a nice throw lever, which you can move on three different uh, portions of the ring. So I like that throw lever. And then I'll go ahead and if I don't hit my camera, the parallax, very smooth to operate. Uh, it does have some tension on it though. A little bit more tension than your average scope in my opinion, but it's not terribly hard to turn. There is an illumination knob, but I don't really use the illumination, so. Uh, that's that. I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna start looking at it 300 yards, kind of get an opinion on the glass. But right now, I am very unimpressed at 50 yards. It's not really that great. Uh, I think the depth of field is really tight. Uh, if you don't know what depth of field means, that means once you set your focus on a given distance, depth of field means you'll have more leeway in terms of what you can see past it and what you can see forward of that once you set your focus. In, photo in the photography world, depth of field is important because you, depending on what you're shooting, like in terms of getting an image, you may want more of your object or your subject to be in frame or in focus, right? In portrait photography, sometimes you just want very, to get that crema, creamy look in terms of focus on the eyes and you don't have, you have background out of focus and all that stuff. You know, depth of field you want thin. In scopes, you want it a little bit wide. You want a wider depth of field. Why is that? One, it's easier to get your target in focus. But number two, depth of field actually affects mirage. So if you don't know what mirage is, it's why your scope looks blurry. Like your image looks kind of blurry, even though you do have it as focused as best you can. And you see like it's blurry in your image when it's like on a, on a sunny day. It's the heat waves coming off the ground, heat waves in the air. And that, that heat in the air is causing that, you know, that, that mirage look. The air is not crisp. There's a lot, you're seeing the heat. Depth of field actually helps you in those conditions because it's able to get more focus from various points because what's happening is when you're focusing in those conditions, you're often trying to focus on, you're ending up focus on Mirage because Mirage is before your target. So what you're able to do is, one, you, if you can get your, your target to focus with a good wide depth of field or deep depth of field, you can get your target to focus and then the Mirage before and after or mostly before, it'll be more clearer. It won't be as blurry, and therefore you're able to make things out a little bit better. So that's why you want a good depth of field on a scope. A lot of people don't, don't think about that, and a lot of people don't know about it, and there really is no, there is no specification on a scope that tells you, hey, this is the depth of field of that scope. It, that, that doesn't exist. It's just a byproduct of how the scope is manufactured and what they're able to achieve when they manufacture that scope. Any case, a lot of rambling, but let's go ahead and do a little bit more shooting. I want to go drive out there though and repaint that target because I want to try to try to get a little bit of group on a steel target just for um, a review I'm writing. We got to hit 1060. We need to adjust 10 feet per second increase. It's about 70 degrees right now. Quick look at the velocities we're getting today. If you can see that we're pushing about 1057 in about 73 degrees, 74 degree weather. SDs are 5.4, which is really good. I am missing left and right though. I, I, the wind out there is pretty, pretty sketch. Uh, it's uh, definitely a lot of, there's a shifty wind out there and uh, not really making good wind calls, but we'll go take a quick look at the, at the uh, target and you can see at what the groups, well, not really a group, but what it looks like on steel. You can see a little bit of elevation dispersion here. The windage though is explained. I mean, I'm dialing three tenths of a mil for the spin drift. I was aiming here initially because the wind was moving right, left to right. So I was, 
you know, shooting obviously to favor left, but I was missing off to the left. So I was trying to uh, come in a little bit center. And then as I'm coming to center, it drifts out to the right because the wind is starting to pick up. So a little shifty today. It doesn't look like it. If you can look beyond the target, there really isn't any, any movement on the, on the foliage out here. Really is no movement, no wind indicators, but it definitely is enough to push you off a tenth or two tenths of a mil at uh, 300, this is 307 yards uh, with a 22. It's definitely enough to push you off, but I, I would, I wanna, obviously your ammo, we need the ammo to minimize this. That's like, I don't know, what is this? About a, roughly a six, six and a half inch, seven inch dispersion there. Not that great. I'll have to look at the numbers on the on the chronograph in terms of where we where we lost a few in terms of low velocity. But I don't know. It is what it is. This is Center X. Um, I could try Lapua Super Long Range. Maybe we'll go ahead and do that. Well, can I do that? I don't know if I have a. I guess I can try to wing it. I think my 50 yard zero with Super Long Range is the same as Center X. So we'll just plug in different velocity values. Let's try that. Pulling the target for the 300. This is Lapua super long range. I did shoot like 15 rounds. I had some, a few misses because the wind did pick up. Uh, it was going strong left to right. So I, I sailed a few this way, then it switched up again. Uh, it's a very switchy wind for rimfire at 300. In any case, uh, elevation dispersion. Uh, take these two out of the loop because I had to readjust the dope. And so my elevation dispersion is actually pretty good. It's a little bit better than Center X, even though the SDs on this are higher than Center X. So the elevation dispersion is about maybe uh, 60, 70% of what it was with Center X. Not really scientific, but uh, I'll snap a photo of this and then uh, maybe I'll do some measurements after the fact. But uh, this is Lapua Super Long Range. It's 1030, all packed up, about to roll out of here. Just need to stop by the Condis container at the Rimfire Range to take care of something before I leave. Took care of what I wanted to take care of as far as getting a little bit of rounds down range with the Voodoo 360 at 300 yards. Got a little bit more time with the Bushnell Match Pro ED scope on longer distances, so I've got a little assessment on it. I kind of want to run it in some in some drills, NRL 22 style drills, just to get a feel for the turrets a little bit. But other than that, I should be able to come up with a write up on the Match Pro ED really, relatively quickly. And a lot of people are probably going to ask me right now. Should you buy the Match Pro e, uh, Bushnell Match Pro ED? If you're not willing to spend a thousand dollars, more than a thousand on a scope, you might as well just get it. I mean, if are you, do you need a new scope, and you're willing, and you're not going to spend a thousand? Then yeah, it's, I think it's a decent option. If you don't need a new scope, there's no real reason to buy this thing. I mean, if you already got a scope you're happy with, I don't think you're going to be overall impressed in terms of an upgrade. Um, Unless you got something really low budget, like a Diamondback Tactical, something without a zero stop, then maybe you should think about moving up. If you have the original Match Pro, yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, it's, it is twice as, near, um, almost twice as much. But at that point, if you're gonna start spending more money on a scope, I, I really, I seriously want you to consider investing more in glass. I know I always, I always kind of kid people in recommending the zero compromise scope, but I mean, I recommend getting higher quality glass if you can get it. I mean, there's a lot of options out there. The Vortex Razor Gen 3 can be had for a low price if you know the tricks. Um, I'm not, not even talking about military discount either. I'm talking about just knowing certain vendors who are authorized but will sell it to you for a cheaper price. So look out for those. Um, but I mean, there's, there's, you don't have to spend four grand on a scope, although it's nice to be able to because you get really top tier glass. But I mean, if you can go up to the 2000 range, there's, there's, there's quite a few options out there. Um, so definitely consider that if you're looking to buy a new scope or want to upgrade something you have already. In any case, I will have a write-up on the Bushmill Match Pro ED relatively quickly. It's not going to be a comprehensive review, but I'll give you my feelings about it. And, you know, you know, just 
should you or should you not buy it? And I'll just give you my, an honest assessment, given I, I spent my own money on one. As far as the Voodoo 360, I should have a review posted maybe first week of May, hopefully. First week of May, second week of May. I'm almost done with it. I just want to get some stuff squared away in terms of information and data. And a few photos, and we should be good to go. And other than that, nothing really else going on. The next match, NRL 22, May 2023, is going to be May 28th, Sunday, before Memorial Day. So Memorial Day weekend is our next NRL 22 match. That is the start of the new season. So remember, if you're not an NRL 22 member and you, you shoot NRL 22 or are looking to get into it, now is a good time to get in because your membership is good for the whole year. And if you, sign up, if you sign up in the middle of the year, you're still paying full price for the membership. So it's a good time right now to maximize that membership. It helps support the organization, NRL 22, so it continues to keep going. And also, it puts you in line to win prizes during the monthly drawing. And there's some other benefits, too. You just have to go on the website and read through that. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Today is Saturday, April 29th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.